Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating a multi-layered, multi-coloured SVG file in the Cricut Design Space. And we're doing this from an image and from a piece of text. So let's have a look at the image that I have here. This is a piece of editable text that has a fill and a couple of strokes on it. And this down here is an image. Now to prepare them for the Cricut Design Space, we have to do a whole heap of things. So you want to sort of buckle in right now because there's a lot that we need to do. What we have to do with the image itself is we need to trace it because right now this is a JPG file. With the image selected, you'll get the trace options up here on the top panel. If they're not there, choose object and then go to image trace and make. And that will start the image tracing process. Now I just got a warning that that image was too detailed and it's not. It's really, really simple. So I just ignore that. Next up, I need the image trace panel, which I can click here to get. Or I can go to window and then image trace. Now, obviously that started off as a multicolored document. I would like it to be back in color, so I'm going to color. And it was black, white, and red. Even though I may not want the white later on, I do want it to be multicolored. And so instead of 30 colors, I should really just bring it down to the three that it was originally designed for. So let me just make it three color. And I'll just wait as Illustrator retraces it. Now Illustrator's done a really good job on this trace. The original image was pretty awful. It was really clunky and so I'm really happy with this trace. This is also not a video that's covering image trace. So if you need to know how to make a better trace, then look at one of my videos that's on image tracing, but you would need to be adjusting some of these advanced options. Now I am gonna click ignore white right now because I don't want white and that will just help me without having to clean this up too much. So let's just do that. So once we're finished, we're going to just expand this. So we'll go to expand. I can close this dialog. I don't need it any longer. Let's go to layers palette, see what we've got. So here is the group and we've got all the hearts, individual paths, and we've got all the outlines as individual shapes. Let's just check the outlines. Okay, so they're filled shapes. That's really important. Now inside the Cricut Design Space, if we want these to cut together, then what we have to do is to create them as compound paths. Now this is a compound path, but it's going to be a separate one inside Cricut Design Space. If we want all the blacks to cut together, then we're going to select on all the blacks, those three objects, and we're going to make a compound path out of those. Object, compound path, make. And so that gives us one compound path that's going to be treated in the Cricut Design Space as a separate layer. So I'm just going to pull that out and tuck it away because it's perfect. Then we're going to do the same with these hearts. Just double check on them, select them, make sure that they're all filled shapes. That's going to be critical because outlined shapes are going to cause all sorts of problems later on as well. Object, compound path, make. So that's our hearts dealt with. I'm just going to hide them for now because we don't need them. And we're going to turn our attention to the text. And this is where the interesting things are going to start happening. So we've got a lot of work to do on this text. This is fully editable text. So if I went to the type tool, I could come in here and change one of these letters. And you can see it's fully editable. It's got a fill and two strokes. So it's got a red stroke, a purple stroke, and the fill. Again, this is not a video on how to stroke text. There are other videos on that. What we're concerned about is breaking this up so we can use it inside the Cricut Design Space. The first thing we have to do is to turn this from text into outlines. So make sure it's all spelled correctly and looking the way you want it to, and choose type and then create outlines. Make sure you have the layers palette visible because you need to know what's happening here. We've got a series of letters, each one of which has these effects applied to it. So what we're going to do is expand everything. Leave your text selected, choose object and then expand appearance and then check the layers palette all over again. You'll see that you've got different things this time. You've got the little inside pink letters are all individual shapes. Then the outlines themselves are individual shapes and they're thicker because they're tucked behind the pink. You're not seeing the bit that's actually larger. So they're much larger than the pink. Let me just show you on the E. You can see that they're much thicker than the letter itself. And then the purple ones, ditto. You've got a whole series of shapes. 
Let's go and address ourselves to the pink bits first of all. We've got a whole series of letters, but you can see that when we have the letter L selected that there's some overlap in here. We can help ourselves to start off with by going to the Pathfinder palette and click Unite. And you'll see that that sort of smoothed out that basic shape. Let's go back to the Layers palette and see what that gave us. Well, it's united in actual fact the L and the O into a single shape. That's perfect. And then we've got the V and the E. So we're going to create a compound path out of these by choosing Object, Compound Path and then Make. And then we're just going to double check that everything looks good. And when we select over it, we don't have anything overlapping. It all looks very neat and tidy. So I'm going to call that good. And let's go to the next object. Now this one's a whole lot more confusing. So when I have it selected, you'll see that it's got a stroke and not a fill. So this is a compound path that has a stroke around it. And it's going to break when we get it to Cricut Design Space. So when you see something like this, you just absolutely have to check and see whether it's filled or stroked. If it's stroked, you have to make it filled. So the first thing we're going to do is because this in here is a series of compound paths, we're going to release them. So we're going to choose Object, Compound Path, Release. So now they're no longer compound paths and they're all lots of little bits and pieces here. That's fine. Now we're going to expand them with Object, Expand. We'll just click OK. So that gives us lots of bits and pieces. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to stick these together because they're sort of overlapping things here. Again, these are going to bite us when we get to the Cricut Design Space. So with them all selected, I'm going to the Shape Builder tool. And I'm just going to run along here and just make sure that any shapes that are a little bit funky are just joined together. So I'm just dragging over the problem areas as I see them. You can zoom in if you're not seeing them clearly. So what you should have is no little bits like this one here. It's very hard to see this, but there's actually an extra little bit in here. So with the Shape Builder, I'm just dragging over it. And that just joins it together to make a single shape. So we haven't got sort of extra shapes running through the filled shapes here. This is looking really, really good now. It's also, of course, a filled shape. So we're pretty much ready to make these into a compound path. So let's just go and reselect these shapes. Let's go and make sure that we've got the shapes themselves selected, which we do. And there's no extra bits and pieces in here. No white fills, for example, which there aren't. And we'll choose Object, Compound Path, Make. Now it's lost its fill, but that's very easy to put back. We're just going to click on the fill here and it's got its fill back. Let's go back to the Layers palette. Let's stick our two pieces of text back together again. And we've got exactly as we would expect our text element over the top and the stroke around it. And of course, the stroke is a bit bigger than the text. We knew that was going to be the case. That's the way it is designed. OK, let's turn all of that off. Let's turn our attention to the purple because we've got a similar problem here. You'll see that the purple is a stroke, not a fill. So we know what to do. The very first thing is to get it out of being a compound path because it is a series of compound paths. So Object, Compound Path, Release. Because we can't do anything with it until we release it. And then we're going to expand it with Object, Expand. Just going to click OK. And so that gives us filled shapes instead of stroke shapes. The next thing is to stick all this together. We've got it all selected. We can try the Pathfinder palette. Let's just go to Unite and Unite it. Now that saved us a trip to the Shape Builder. It actually neatened things up just automatically, really quickly and easily. It is a compound path. It's been created as a compound path by the Unite option. That's always something to look at to see if Unite will help you out. And so let's build our text back up. It's exactly as it was designed, but now it's compound paths. And compound paths are going to work fine in Cricut Design Space. So we need to neaten things up before we head out of here. Let's select this group and then ungroup the objects because we don't need them inside groups. And we do have two compound paths that are the same color. There's this compound path and this one. So we could make them into a single compound path if we want to cut them at the same time. 
you don't want to cut them at the same time, leave them the way they are. But if you do, let's put them together. Object, compound path, make. It's a choice that you make. Now what's happened and why it became so thick is because it's jumped above the word love here. So if we just drag this one back up, you'll see that it covers it up. So when we cut it, we're going to have a thick purple, a thickish red, and then a pink that goes on top. And when you're cutting them and putting them together, they're actually going to line up pretty neatly. It's going to be pretty easy to line up if they're overlapping. So if you're happy with that, at this stage, you're going to save it. File, export, export as. Obviously, it's an SVG file. I'm going to call this Love and Hearts. And just click OK. Let's go to the Cricut Design space. I'm going to upload the image. And I'm going to import it into the project that I already have open. And here it is. And here are all the elements. So you'll see this is the black, this is the pink middle, this is the red outline, and this is the purple. And so we can ungroup them here in the Cricut Design space. Let me just put this one back so we can see it. Once they're ungrouped, you can select them and move them to wherever you want them to be. But of course, love and the hearts are joined together because that's the way we designed it in Illustrator. So there's the process for taking an illustration and a piece of text, a complex piece of text with multiple strokes, and packaging it from Illustrator in an SVG format that is going to open up and be perfect inside the Cricut Design Space. You just have to have your wits about you in Illustrator and you need to be aware that when you expand text, the strokes are likely to be compound paths that are stroked and you can't do anything with them until you make them filled shapes, until you join them all together so that all the multiple pieces that went to make it up are all sort of smoothed out and you've got just a single shape and it's nice and clean. And then you've got a series of compound paths because those are going to open up as the separate layers inside the Cricut Design Space. I know this is really complex, but if you just take it step by step, you should be fine. I hope that this video has really helped you understand what process needs to be put in place. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell, and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.